Hello everybody, this time I joined Istra 300. Let's four, take a look. How three, two, one, let's go! Good luck everyone! Stay safe, stay safe! What's in the Österreich? Yes, ladies! And we were off, even before the sun came up at 7 am in the morning. The race started this early because the longest distance that we could choose was 300 kilometers. There were two other shorter versions available as well, 235 kilometers and 155 kilometers. I was kind of hoping on finishing the 300 kilometer option, but wasn't quite sure if I will be able to make it before the cutoff time or not. Well, the distance is not the longest that I ever rode, what worried me were that there were more than 5400 meters of climbing to be done during the course. I calculated a bit how long this would take me and I estimated that it would be 13 to 14 hours if I was driving alone. Luckily, there were more than one and a half thousand participants in the event so I shouldn't have any problems finding a good group to draft from. And in the worst case that I were too slow at an intersection, the organizers would just reroute me to a shorter version of the race so it wouldn't be the end of the world. The first task for me was to find a good group that will go the longest route. I was asking a bit other cyclists around me which version they are going and what times they are trying to get and I was surprised that majority of the races were from Austria. I was kind of expecting that the majority of people would be from Croatia but as it turned out more than 600 participants were from Austria followed by Slovenians and Croatians with about 200 participants and they were people from all over the world, even outside the Europe as well. After spending first half an hour chatting with other racers and getting to know them, the sun finally came up and greeted us with some gorgeous views of the landscape around us. The downside of this was that we were driving directly into the sun and at some sections it was really really hard to see. Luckily there were no accidents because of it. Speaking of which, I was quite surprised that I didn't saw any major accidents during the course. There were more people here than there are usually at a Marathon Franja and in Marathon Franja in the first half an hour I saw like 15 falls and two major crashes with multiple people involved. Here I only saw one guy crash out during some steep downhill section in a really tight corner. Other than that nothing, at least not that I saw. I wonder why there is such a difference between this and uh, Marathon Franja, but maybe it's because Marathon Franja is much shorter race so everybody is pushing much much harder. Here we were driving in a really large group for more than 100 kilometers. The tempo was just perfect for me, not too fast, not too slow and it was very very easy to draft. So when we came to the first intersection I was actually ahead of the schedule that I calculated for myself if I wanted to finish the 300 option. As you can see the event was held on closed roads and I was wondering how they were going to be able to close the roads all over Istria for a whole day but as we later found out not all the roads were closed all the times and on some there was only one lane closed the other was still used for the traffic. Despite this, especially in the later stages of the race, there were quite a few cars driving toward us or with us, but they must have had some instructions to give way for cyclists because often they were leaving us to go ahead of them even if you we were driving only 20 or 30 kilometers per hour. After about two hours of riding, we reached our first intersection where we could choose the length of the route. Most of us took the longer option, so at least 200 kilometers. Soon after, we started with the descent toward the seaside and continued cup for a couple kilometers on a flat section. Before checking the course just by the name I thought that majority of the route will be along the seaside but as it turned out most of it was through the inland of Istria. Here we started our first major climb of the event. It was quite steep especially at the beginning but the group kept nice tempo and I was able to follow with not too much problems. We were doing something between 250 and 300 watts, so it was doable. 
To make it a bit easier, the middle of ascent had a flat or actually a bit downhill section where we could uh, rest for a couple of minutes before continuing climbing for about 20 more minutes. Soon we reached the top and what followed was one of the hardest descents I ever did. The road was very steep, my rear wheel actually skipped in couple of corners and the state of the road was pretty bad, full of holes and gravel. Luckily I made it down in one piece and didn't lose too much time compared to the rest of the group, so I quickly caught on to them and continued with them. Usually before going on a longer rides I prepare my own food, but this time I was unable to pack enough calories in it for the whole race. Luckily this wasn't a problem as there were feed stations every 50 kilometers. Here we already reached the second station where majority of us actually stopped. I took a couple of energy bars and refilled my water bottles before continuing. In the next 50 kilometers nothing really interesting happened, the route was pretty flat and we were still riding in a very big group so the drafting was good and soon we reached another feed station. Normally I avoid using energy gels during rides because I always get them all over my fingers and I hate uh, touching my handlebars with sticky fingers. But these Dextra energy gels that we got here I must say I really really liked. They were packaged very nicely and easy to drink. The taste wasn't so bad either. I tried looking for them in Slovenia but so far haven't found a store that sells them. Here we reached the final crossroads where we could choose to continue on the longest route or take a shortcut for the medium one. Up to this point I was almost an hour faster than I anticipated so I decided to continue on the longer route. At this point only three of us were left in this group so we had to do some more conscious rotations for drafting but in couple of kilometers more cyclists joined us and group grew to maybe 10 to 15 cyclists so it was a bit easier again. The easy part didn't last long as we soon took a turn from wide regional roads towards some very sketchy, narrow and steep local roads. Luckily the group was still pretty compact so we were able to use some drafting here but the cracks were starting to show and with this I don't mean the cracks on the road. After 6 hours of riding I was starting to wonder when and how I'm going to go pee. I kind of didn't want to stop and lose the group in front of me but uh, I couldn't continue much longer. Luckily we soon stopped at the next feed station where I guess I wasn't the only one with this kind of a problem. After a bit of relief and restocking on food we continued down another harrowing descent through some pretty nasty, steep and narrow corners. Here the road was in a pretty bad shape and we saw some punctures. Again my tires luckily held together, uh, probably because of the tubeless system which when it works is perfect and I could uh, rejoin the group and continue through the hardest part of the race. After 7 hours of riding we were greeted by a wall. I'm not sure what exact uh, percentage was but it must have been more than 10 even 15%. Here I could barely stay on the bike and as we saw earlier not everybody did. Doing some zigzags I kind of managed to crawl to the summit but sadly the group uh, got away from me and I had to continue alone. The descent was one of the fastest if not the fastest one I ever did. The road was pretty straight with quite a hard incline so we were able to achieve speeds of over 70 km per hour. After reaching the lake at the bottom another very steep descent toward the other side followed where I was unable to stay on the bike for whole time and actually had to walk for a couple of meters. After finishing with two of the hardest climbs of my life the road finally straightened and joined all three distances together. 
Despite drinking ESO for the whole race, I suffered a cramp in my right thigh. Luckily I had some powdered magnesium with me that I took, which actually helped or at least I didn't get any cramps until the finish. Sadly those last two climbs completely destroyed the group and there was no one to be seen in front or behind me, so I had to continue alone. There was one more climb left before the end of the race, but this one wasn't as steep as the previous ones, so I was able to finish it without too many problems. At the top there was another feed station where I could eat some food and recover my food stores. I didn't say this before, but I really really loved the idea that at the feed stations they just gave you a new flask so you didn't have to spend time refilling the old ones. And what's even better than that is that uh, there were a lot of kids cheering us on alongside the roads and because we got new flasks at each feed station we could actually throw them. And I guess I wasn't the only one who enjoyed doing this because I swear I saw a kid with more than 10 flasks. Here toward the end there was a bit more traffic on the road, however they were still usually on their separate lane and they were always giving us priority in the crossroads. Finally I reached the last feed station and while I was recovering a group of cyclists just flew by me. Sadly I didn't saw them before otherwise I would just continue with them, it would be so much easier. Like I was really really suffering for this last 50 kilometers or so. After starting to wonder if I'm going to come to the finish line before the sunset, Another guy from the Austria with whom I talked at the beginning of the race caught with me and I got a bit of motivation to continue. Sadly he was even more tired than I was so I still had to do most of the work in front but it was still easier to ride with somebody and just knowing that I wasn't alone. Luckily in a couple more kilometers another one joined us and I was able to take a bit of the rest in the back. If I wouldn't be on the bike for more than 10 hours already, this last part of the race would probably be my favorite. The sun was already really low so the colors were very soft and beautiful. We were riding beside the sea so the views were really amazing and the temperature was just perfect. When signing up for the race I was a bit afraid how this is going to go down if it would be raining all day, but uh, luckily the weather was perfect, not too hot, not too cold throughout the whole day. I'm sure that this would be a completely different race if it were raining and uh, it is quite late in the season so it can get quite cold by this time I think. And after 11 hours of riding we could finally see the finish line. While this was not the longest ride I ever did, it was by far the hardest. After crossing the finish line I swore never to do anything similar again, but it didn't last that long after just one week of recovering I already signed for the race in 2023. Although maybe I'll take a shorter version this time. So yeah, this was my last cycling event of 2022. I was quite happy with the season, but I wasn't done with racing for the year yet, as in two weeks I finished Ljubljana's running marathon, which uh, went actually better than I expected, which is good news because in a bit more than six months I will do something really really stupid. <laughs> <laughs>